Okay, guys, good afternoon, the last session. So if I'm holding you for a long time, you can go home. And you'll be stuck in the traffic, the night traffic of Manila. Yeah, so exciting. Okay, so my name is Ron and I'm based in Melbourne and I uh, work for MySQL for the last actually 10 years or 11 now. Um, as you can see on my shirt, uh, it's part of the Oracle team. So the actual original my skill, you know, one of the folks. Um, and my talk is going to be no slides. It's all demo, live. Um, and it is about a new feature. So actually, you're going to get a bonus as well. So we're starting with the topic, and then I'm going to give you another bonus of another feature that actually complement the first one. Uh, and the first one is no SQL in my SQL. Now, yeah, it sounds a bit, really? Like, what's going on? Um, so MySQL is a relational database that speaks SQL like all other databases. Um, and in the last, let's say, you know, four years, there was a huge hype of NoSQL databases as the thing that's going to save us from the schema. No need schema, we don't want it, it's hard, it's not good. And this hype really turned out to be a big hype. Uh, developers started to go and use it and kind of threw out the DBA. We don't need DBA anymore. We can just use JSON. Uh, and I'm not talking about Hadoop. So I'm talking about the NoSQL document storage, the ones that basically use key value and store JSON documents. So no Word documents or Excel. When you are hearing the name document store or NoSQL document store, uh, the idea is that you have a JSON object that is stored in a store, and the database is supposed to be smart enough to bring it back when you want it. Uh, so it's completely different than no other no no SQL uh, um, databases like Hadoop, that is an object storage, completely different, does completely different things. Um, now, it is a great, a great, great thing to have the ability to not use tables. Now, if you haven't used databases before, database is basically a glorified Excel sheet. Just have lots of Excel sheets in it, and it's smart enough to bring the information when you need it. That, that's why it does. But it looks like, well, in logical way, it looks like an Excel. It has columns and it has rows. The columns are basically the properties, you know, first name, last name, address, phone number, and so on. And the rows are the different objects or different items. You, me, whatever. Right? This is, this is the whole thing about database. That's the whole thing. There is nothing else in it. Apart from the fact it can do smart stuff with it and bring you the information quickly. And databases are all about being smart in the way that bring the data back. And that's the SQL, that's the language. So SQL is a language of how you write a question to get an answer. Please show me the first name and last name of all the people that live in the radius of whatever from Makati. And uh, so uh, this is one thing the databases are doing. The other thing is to do it quickly. So when I ask the question, I want to get the answer really quickly. Because when I do ask the question, I need the answer within a few milliseconds so the client that is using the, the data can actually render it and show it nicely and all these things. Um, now, the problem with schema is that schema is basically this structure. The problem with tables is that it is very, very structured. Hence the word structured databases or relational databases. And so it means that if we have a table that we thought about at the beginning of when we started developing our application, project, whatever, and we thought that all the information we're gonna collect is the first name, last name, uh, the address, phone, uh, phone numbers, and basically that's it, maybe some ID, whatever we might do through the process, go into a stage where we actually want to add some more information, you know, maybe a second phone number because they have a secret from, from the wife, or maybe they have another address where they have another place, so uh, some information actually that is legit and not, uh, and not some secretive data, but we want to add it. And then this is where things become problematic, because if you have now the whole population of the, of the Philippines in the database, 
and you add another row, it might take time, sorry, another column, it might take time to rebuild the table behind the scenes, but it takes time. Uh, and most of the time in big companies where it's not just two people writing some, uh, some garage application, the developers cannot do it by themselves. They have to go to the people that actually understand the database in order to add this column. They can't just say, oh, just add another column of, uh, of phone numbers because that might break the whole relation between different tables. Because you have tables that one represent the name of all the people, the other represent the income every month. So then you can calculate how much tax they have to pay. So if you add another phone number, it might break relationship. So you talk to the people, the DBAs, those are the DBAs, the people that are supposed to understand the structure, supposed to understand the software, the database itself, and know how to do it. And then when NoSQL came into the picture, it was no longer a problem because the NoSQL is no structure. We can stack whatever we want in a JSON document. It is very structured. It is look like a very easy place to get all the information. And so everyone went to it. Well, it looks nice, you know, great idea. We'll just throw everything into documents. And when we need it, we detect. And if we want to add something, we just add it. There is no restriction. It's great, in theory. The big problem of NoSQL databases is that, and I always give the analogy, databases or relational databases are like a very ordered, cabinet or room that you store your clothes. It has shelves, it has boxes. Each box has like a nice sticker that you printed with, you know, those small dimo thing. And it's really ordered. So there is a box for first name, there is a box for last name, there is everything. Now if you want to add another box, you have to get a box. You have to print things. It takes time, it's a problem. But if I ask you a question, that is a whatever, how many socks you have. You just go to the box of socks, you click them, one, two, three, and you tell me I've got 10 socks. Easy. Now I'm telling you, okay, can you calculate me how many socks that, that are black or, or has this size? Again, it's not a problem. You just take them out and they have like small guys tickets on them and you can count it really quickly. And you can do those analytics processes or, or questions, queries, very easily, just by writing, just give me the information about the soft that suits this suit and blah, 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 and you get an answer. With NoSQL databases, the analogy that um, represent NoSQL databases, it's the same cabinet, but the only difference is that you have whatever garment of clothes you've got, pants, you just throw it in, close the door. <laughs> and then you have socks, you just close them in. You just draw, throw everything in. And it doesn't matter what it is, you just throw it in. And there is a chaos inside. You never open the thing because it will open on you. It will fall on you. But if you do need socks, you ask, can you get me the black socks that I put on Tuesday? And the, the cabinet magically bring it to you. That's no SQL databases. They bring the information you want as long as you, want, as long as you know what you want. And the biggest problem is that can you tell me how many clean socks I've got in there? Because I threw some old socks that I haven't really cleaned. That's where things become a bit problematic because you cannot ask a NoSQL database to do analytics. You have to take it somewhere else. And what happened to most of the developers, they used NoSQL databases and then when they asked to actually, can you create some nice dashboard that tells me how much I've got of whatever? they had to take all this information out to the application and do the math themselves. And so many developers, after the hype gone, and it was no longer that you know, unique, and things moved on to AI and stuff, developers started to scratch their head and said, um, why am I building schema inside my application? It's just, databases does that for the last seven, like 30 years. And so there is a bit of stopping the hype of just NoSQL. It still has a merit, it's still something smart to use, but not always. Now we in MySQL understood that we can't just avoid NoSQL and say, ah, no. We actually understood that NoSQL has some places where it makes lots of sense to use, mainly for 
a very quick and agile development. But it cannot be by itself. So what we did is that we created a new API, which I'm going to show you in a second. And that API is a NoSQL API to the same data. So you have two APIs now, two ways to access your data. One is a regular SQL, and the other one is a NoSQL way. Now, in NoSQL, there is a common language. It's called CRUD, Create, Update, uh, Read, and Delete. And it's a very, very primitive way of accessing the data. And I'm going to show you in Python how we can use those two interfaces at once. And you'll see it's the same data. It's important to understand that the benefit of using it, or the unique feature of using MySQL with NoSQL, is the fact that it's the same data on the same tables you just access with two different um, interfaces. So let's go into it. So we have a, a black console like we all like. I hope you see, because the projectors are really not great. Where's my mouse, 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 mouse? Where are you? Mousey mouse? Here, I'm trying to make it a bit bigger, but I don't know how much you're going to see when it's too big. Okay, so we're going to go now. I'm not, I'm not doing typing stuff because when you type stuff, you make mistakes. So I'm going to just uh, ah. okay. So we go into Python and we're going to import the the, the connector which is called MySQL X. Go ahead. Okay, so MySQL X. And then we can create a session. Now, if we don't specify anything special, that will basically mean that we are connecting to the second API, the NoSQL loop. The NoSQL, I, I can speak without microphone because my voice is big, so I'm used to not speaking with microphone. Um, so now what it means is that we connected to the NoSQL API, to the NoSQL protocol. It's a completely different protocol than we had before. And I'll connect to the other one afterwards. You'll see when we're doing um, some comparison. But right now, we created a session that, it is, that is to the NoSQL interface. Great. Now, we're going to create a schema. Now, the way NoSQL databases work is that you have schema, which is basically a database. And the schema have collections. Collections are tables. And the tables have objects. The, the collections has objects in them, which are basically just JSON data types, or JSON um, documents. OK, so we're going to create a schema. We create a schema uh, test. And now we create a collection, if I'll manage to actually do it. Come on, come on, come on. Ah. Sorry, it's uh, very, very confusing to work when the screen is over there. But we'll get there. OK, so we create a yeah, we create a schema again? No. What am I doing? Collection. Come on, collection. Go. Here you go. So we create a collection, the collection called My Collection. Very simple. OK, I'm going to add some items into the collection. Now, you have to remember that, again, I don't have to define anything. So I'm just creating those three items that you see over there which has the information I decided to put right now in this in this items. So it's a name and age. Now, it doesn't have to be all of them has to be a name and age. One can be name and age. One can be name and um, surname. One can be address and favorite food. Doesn't matter. Doesn't have any meaning what's inside each of those items. Each of those items are completely by itself. It is has to it has to be a, it has to be a JSON, and if we want to get some kind of understanding out of it, we might want to have it in some way um, similar, but it doesn't have to. Now, the first thing we're going to do is finding a collection. We want to find information. That's that's now we threw out things into the cabinet. Now let's get things out. Let's find something out of it. And I'm going to repeat some of the stuff later in, in, in the rest of the demo. But what I'm doing now, I'm basically creating, again, an object that will contain the items from our NoSQL database. And I'm basically saying, find me 
everything that have an unbinding, uh, unbinding uh, parameters, I'm saying find me uh, everything that starts with S and the age will be less than 20. Okay, so the, the question is again, this is, this is the CRUD API, this is how it works. You add and then you uh, search, okay? So create, update, delete, uh, CRUD. See you. Read, sorry. Create, update, read, delete. Those are the options. This is the only things you can do with those items. You can either create them with the add, you can read them with find, you can update with, we'll see later, update, and you can delete them. That's the only thing you can do with this interface. This interface is very primitive, but it's very powerful. And it is supported by Python and Node.js and everything. So when we look, we're doing this, we now have an object so we can fetch. What did I do? Where did it go? Oh, what are you doing? Okay. Um, okay. Okay, so I'm now fetching one of those ob objects from, uh, from the collection of, of uh, documents that we got. And if we look at it, we just get the JSON data stream. So we know that it has an age of whatever, it has whatever name, and it has an ID. Now the ID is very important, because the ID is acting as a primary key. Now MySQL, like many other databases, need primary key for everything, and this is the key you look based on. So the key was created automatically for us. We can, if we want to, set a key by ourselves. So the key, if we don't create it, the interface automatically creates the keys for us. We can create them by ourselves, but make sure that you are creating unique, unique key for every document. It is, after all, a table, and it needs to be like this, otherwise you have two documents with the same ID. Doesn't make much sense. And, you know, we can do stuff like, come on, do it, do it. Ah. Okay, and we can do stuff like formatting our articles to get us just part of the information. So you can access this, you can use it in Python, and now you have documents you can store, and, and it looks like it's very stupid. You can do it with arrays or dictionaries, but bear in mind, this is now in your persist, in, it, is, it is stored in our persist store, which is MySQL that runs in the background. So if this, if this was a microservice that has no knowledge, it is connected to a server that provides information. So don't look, I made a very, very simple a demo, but it is not just an object that you brought or you just created. It is stored, I can shut this machine down, restart it, and it will still be there. Okay, so it is stored as a persistent view. Great. Now, I don't need this collection anymore, so all those documents are now going to go, so we just dropped a collection. Okay. Next, I'm gonna show you a very similar thing, but we will look what happens at the background. So, I'm gonna just, in order to reconnect to the, uh, just reset the, 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 reset the session, and, ah, it drives me nuts. I think I'm gonna move. You know what, no, no. I'm gonna do duplicate, I'm aware because I hate duplicates, but I'll do duplicate, and then I can actually see what I'm doing. That will be easier, great. Okay, just a second, I'm gonna open up another interface because I'm gonna show you now what happens in the background when we do stuff. And I need to make this bigger, otherwise I can't see anything, right? Uh, that's big enough. Great, cool. So let's do the same thing in here, connecting to inputting this, connecting this, we're gonna create a new schema, uh, schema and collection. I'm doing it in one go. So I'm, what I did now, I just created a new schema, created a new collection, and now let's have a look what happens at the background from an from a SQL point of view. Now those who hasn't used my databases before, that's that's how you connect to MySQL database, the MySQL uh, server, and we're gonna use the database test, which is what we created. We created the collection, okay, the schema, 
test in here. When we did this, what happened is actually creating a table. And let's have a look at the list of tables we've got in here. We see that we have my collection, which is exactly the collection we created in here. Okay? And this is to show you that at the back of the back of the whole thing, we actually have the same store. It is the same exactly the same thing, it's just two different interfaces. Now, why am I taking this microphone? Because I'm gonna go to the screen. I'm gonna try to go to the screen to show you something. No, I won't. I'll just go here. Can you even see anything? I'm just like, those projectors are really bad. Anyway, what we see here is the describe of the table. So this is a table. This is the Excel that we talked about. And what we see here is basically what are the columns. So what is the name of the column? And what is the definition of each of those columns? And we see that the table was created for us. And this is the table that is created automatically for us when we create things through the, uh, through the new NoSQL API. And you see that we have the document itself, and the document is a just JSON data type. This is a new data type that we introduced in version 5.7, which is like three, four years ago now. And now we have the new version, eight. Um, so JSON is a type, is a type sheet that can store, and it's a binary type, it's not a text type, it's, it's, a, it's a good a new optimized type. And then the next field is the ID. And the ID is basically driven from the document itself. You can see it's called store, it has the stored generated at the end of it, which means it's a generated column. It is extracted from the JSON. You don't need to specifically say what the ID is, the ID needs to come, needs to be inside your JSON. So if you decide to create your own IDs and not letting MySQL create them by, by, uh, by themselves, then you need to include one object inside your JSON that is underscore ID. And that will be translated, and this is the primary key as well, as you can see. So that's all happening automatically without you needing to do anything. Great. What's next? I don't remember. What's next? Ah, yes. Uh, again, for people that used MySQL before, if you look at the definition of the table, you can see how the table was created as well. So that's how, they, they, uh, how this API does this uh, behind the scenes. Now, I'm adding again uh, three objects. Okay, so we add those objects again, and let's have a look how it looks from an SQL point of view. Yeah, of course it's too big. Let me make it a bit smaller, and then, yeah, okay, now you can see. So now we do the, the operation select. This is how you query on an SQL level. You basically tell, it says, show me everything from my collection, and it shows us, again, Excel. The top is the columns and then rows. And you can see it's stored just as a document stores, uh, just as the doc as JSON documents, and it's very easy. Uh, I'll just skip this, not important. Uh, not interesting. I'll skip, I'll skip to something a bit different, okay? I am installing a, what we call the MySQL shell. This is a new a administrative tool that allows us to, apart from just administer stuff, it allows us to use a, a new interface into MySQL. And I'm gonna connect to the MySQL. So this is, as you can see, MySQL. Can you? Uh, yeah, maybe we can, no, we can. I'm connecting to this new MySQL shell and I'm in paper mode. So you can see the PY at the, at the uh, bottom there. That means that we can now speak JSON to the shell. We are now connecting to a local host. So we are now connected, and you can see here that because we haven't implemented, because we haven't specified anything, we are connected to the X protocol. The X protocol is the NoSQL interface. Okay, so now we are connected to our server through the NoSQL interface, not through the regular SQL. And I'm gonna use a schema that called Word, Word X. This is a schema that is already installed, I installed it before, and 
if we look at the variable db, it is, this is the object that holds the current schema that we are using. If I'm creating a new collection, looking at, oops, ah, where are we? Where are we? Embarrassing. Okay. Yeah, not deleting, not deleting, just copying, much, much better. If we now look at DB get collections, what are the collections inside our schema? Again, don't, it's not, it's not, it's very simple. You've got the database itself, the server, it has schemas inside, can be as many schemas as you want, and that's the um, relating to databases in SQL. And then you have collections, which are tables, and the collections have documents. Those are the things that you put in collections. So now we have two collections, the my country, which is what we're gonna work on, and flags that we just created here. And I'm gonna delete now because I don't want it. No, it makes any difference. But now we don't have it anymore. So it just deletes the whole table. Okay, now I will, I'll show you in a second what we've got in this collection. It has countries and stuff. But I'm adding a new country, okay? So it's a JSON, it's a JSON document, so the command will be db, which is the object, country info, which is the collection we want, add, and then just the JSON. It has GNP, it has independent here, and, and demographics, and it has different hierarchy and nested um, JSON objects in it, and it's all good. And when we add it, we get query okay, item was, one item is affected, which means we had this document in. Now, we can do db country uh, info find, and we get 240 documents. Okay, so this is all the information, all the documents we have inside this schema, and you can see in here each one, you know, this is, for instance, uh, South Africa, ID, demographics, all sorts of things. So we have, uh, 240 of them, but actually I don't want all of them. I can use the limit. To limit, oops, see this? So now we limit to one. Just give me one document. And it will give me the document that is the first based on whatever sort. Okay, okay? and we get one document. Good. Now we, we, can, we can always, and we can also look based on properties that are inside the JSON. Okay, so find me Australia. And did find Australia. This is the document that represents Australia. GNP, dependency, name, blah, 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 where it sits, all sorts of stuff. We can also look for all the documents that has a GNP bigger than 58, than 500,000. And we get 10 documents. Okay, so out of all the countries inside, we got just 10 that are more than. And we can do things a bit more complex, like show me all the ones that start with, so you can see here, name, like, 500,000. And we get 10 documents. Okay, so out of all the countries inside, we got just 10 that are more than. And we can do things a bit more complex, like show me all the ones that start with, so you can see here, name, like, starting with A, and have a GMP more than uh, 5,000, and we get three documents. So we basically can do find based on whatever, um, whatever, oops, whatever um, filtering we want, including doing filtering with a bit of math in them. So find me all the countries that have GPN more than 5,000, and, oh, sorry, this one is actually to show you that uh, this is the way to treat uh, the structure of the JSON. So if we look at population, population is part of the demographics. Okay, so it's a sub, it's a sub object inside JSON. And we can, we can use obviously any property from inside the JSON, in this case, GNP, which is the main one, and then demographics, which is the secondary one, and we still get an answer. We can do some uh, math in our filtering. So show me all those who has GMP times 
million divided by demographics, blah, 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 to get some normalized view, still works, so the filter can be, uh, can be a bit, um, can be a bit more complex, we can bind. So in this case, we are, uh, and we're using chaining. So it's all, it's all about, you know, chaining and, and doing object document and object oriented. So DB country info find when the name is the country. So we're looking for a property that will be country. And then we bind it and saying country is Italy. It will bring us at Italy. And we can now, we can also do Binding to an object, so my find, and now my find friends will give us friends. This one, okay. So now we have an object that we can use the binding to. So you can do a easier searches. Okay, blah blah blah. Field is not interesting. Uh, this is not interesting. There is sorting. I'm just just because time is uh, is running out. Let me see if there is things that are, so we have, we have obviously, uh, I won't, okay, I can skip this, the, the, the thing about the, the ability to do find and sort, so we can sort by, again, chain and sort by independence here, and it gives us uh, things uh, sorted by whatever we wanted, yeah, 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 this is interesting, this is the modifying, okay, this is how you change objects. And this is actually quite, um, this is quite powerful. I want you to show you this. This is actually a bit more interesting. So now we have all those countries and it has some information in. But then the application is uh, evolving and needs to have the airports of this, of this country. So now we need to add airports. We can do it in two ways. We can actually set object by object the airports. Or we can say we want it to be on all the documents, and if we haven't inserted any, any or there is no airport, it will be just null. So in this case, I'm saying I'm going to add the attribute airports to all the documents. And this is how we do it. So we modify, and I'm not giving any filters, so it will be for all the documents. This is a dangerous operation. If it was like millions of, of objects, it will change a million of objects. And I'm basically setting airport to empty at the moment. Doing this, and I can see that 240 items has been affected because I haven't filled them. So it's a very, very dangerous one. And now I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna add to France. Um, yeah, I can show you that now the, the country Sealand has another attribute. <coughs> New attribute, where is it? Airports, 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 here you go. Okay, so each country now will have an airport and it will be empty because we haven't updated anything. And now we can start an update. So we are modifying, in, and now we have a filter. So the name, where the name is friends. Area append, just append to airports, the code of the airport, or why. And I'm going to do it, and I'm now going to look at France. And now France has an airport, RI. And I can add another airport because they have another airport. Good, let's look at it. And now we have two airports. So it's very flexible, and this is why no SQL. And I'm doing all sorts of other things. Not interesting. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, I did want to show you something else. Uh, so that's adding index, never mind. I did want to show you something else before. How much time do I have? 15? Ah, oh, 15 is a long time. <laughs> no, because I want to show you another thing that is not necessarily a document exit. It's actually a nice demo. Um, one thing I wanted to show you, it's another feature that came in 8 that you might, if you are using MySQL or used before, it's called uh, window functions. And window functions are what Oracle guys called over. And that's the ability to calculate things on a almost real time as you query the query itself. So I'm gonna switch into an SQL mode now. You'll excuse me that we are moving from the NoSQL interface. So you can see now we are speaking SQL language. And it's the same database, same connection, so it's all good. Uh, choo -choo 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 -choo. Yeah. 
Okay, so I'm doing now a select. What am I doing? Wait. I, I, I now, con, con, I now, uh, wait, wait. Oh, okay. I didn't expect to be 0 0.0. I think I, I missed something, wait. Yeah, okay. So now, since we do, and this is this is the this is the other side of the, the fact that everything is in NoSQL, but it's still in tables. We can now do analytics internally, like tell me what is the sum of all the GMP from all the countries. So just calculate everything, and it tells me that the worldwide GMP is this big number. Great. Okay. Which is something that you cannot do with the crowd operation. You can do it with NoSQL databases. Unless you have a plugin that does that, and the plugins are a bit more complex. Uh, we can also count how many documents we have. So we have 240. We knew that we have 240. And we can do things like show me the ones with the top GNP, you know, more than blah, blah, blah. And it shows us the names. And it's very simple to use. But Here's the nice thing that you can do with a, that we can do with a over. So the, this query I had was select the name and the GNP, and in the running average we are basically running a calculation of adding line by line. Now it sounds easy, it sounds easy to do, but it's not very easy to do with one command inside SQL or SQL query, you do it with a window function. That basically means, and this is what we see here, it's a bit messy because of the line indentation, but what we're saying here is the window that we are calculating the sum for is all the rows before me. So the first row, we got the sum here, the number here. This is actually the sum of this and this, the two lines before me. This one is this, this, and this. And this one is, you get down there, the idea. Okay, now I made a very simple window of uh, just everything that comes before. I could say, get me all the three before me and the four after me and get a running average and things like this. And it happens online as you query without creating all sorts of sub-queries and getting into, into application and then calculate it. It's all by one thing only, and that's this, the over. The over creates a window, a window of the ability to calculate. And so we can do things like, something like, and this is the last one from this. This one is a query that, and I'll read a query. So it selects, uh, yeah, there is no way I can do it, not for I can quickly. Uh, show me the name and the GMP, and then sum the, again, sum the, uh, the, the running sum, but also rank which country has the highest GMP, or with another, so I'm saying do a rank over the same window and show me GMP rank, and then order by the rank. No, where is the order by the rank? I had one order by the rank. Ah, oh, it's not going to be nice as I thought. It is. Actually, no, this is what I meant to do. Sorry. That's not my idea. So what we see here is a table that shows us the countries that have more than 50,000, which is what we wanted. Then we have the GMP. We have the running sum just before, just like before. But with the same query, we can also have another window, which is the window of everything. And the ranking is on all the windows. So the ranking of through three, two, four, seven is calculated for each of the rows as it goes through the query. And this just with one short line that says, show me the rank for this window. Now you can, you can make the windows filtered by, or it's called, we call it partitioned by. So you can do it filtered by a continents, filtered by everything. And all you have to do is just do the rank over or partitioned by continent 
and then over everything there. And it will show us who's the number one for each continent. Just by adding partition by, and it's not partitioning the data. So don't get me wrong, it's not partitioning the data. The partition is basically how do we build the window. So if, if you want to check window functions, by all means, try. Now I do have a few more minutes to show you a new, uh, not, not very new now, but that's what we call, so this is a demo that shows you InnoDB cluster. It's a new cluster that we created, just giving you an, a bonus, because this completes the idea of using the data and having HA, which is very important today. So what we see here is some kind of application runs in, in a, with a worker in the background that transfer money between people. Never mind what it actually does, it's not, it does nothing. And there is a, some BI, no, I don't know, it's just money runs on my screen. I don't get anything, unfortunately. Because it gets to really high numbers. But what we see, you see at the bottom is that we have three servers. Those are completely separate servers that are replicating the information between them. And my application shows you the BI and everything that you see from queries that are coming to these two blue ones. So the blue ones are reads, and the red one is the one where the data is written. So all the transactions. Now, if you ever worked with MySQL cluster or MySQL application, MySQL application mainly, you know that there is a pain of failover. What happens when you have a disaster? So I'll actually show you a disaster. We're gonna kill, yeah, 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 here. We're gonna kill our main server, this one, and see what happens. So I'm gonna connect to the MySQL shell, and if I find, and I just stop it. Now I'll do it very quickly so you can actually see what happens. Okay, so you'll see now that the first machine went down, there is a stop for a second, the cluster understand what happens, and it promoted another class, another machine, as, uh, and you can see the application just keeps on running. So we had a, we had a seamless failover when the machine goes down, so if you ever used MySQL application before, that should knock you down because this is all happening automatically. You don't need to do anything anymore. There is a router at the background that routes the application and adjusts itself. Now, when we bring back the application, I think it will be quite hard for you to see, but you'll see that we have, you actually can, it's too small, but this tells us, is there a way I can make it so you can actually uh, not without, yeah, so you, may, you might see, but what happens now is that we have, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm about to finish. So what we see now is that, obviously, the, those two machines now have more data than the one that was killed. And I'm gonna start it up. And for the time that the other one is catching up, you'll see that it doesn't accept any reads. And as soon as it does, it will automatically join and become part of the cluster. Again, this all happens automatically. So all we're doing is, yeah, probably should copy the right thing, this one. Otherwise, it won't. Yeah, we're starting. It will go off, off, off. It will go online. You can barely see, but it will become green. Yeah, come on, come online. Come on, online. Online. Yeah, it's trying. Come on, go, go, go online, be nice, seriously, come on. It's trying, oh, here you go, yeah, yeah, that's, that's because it's on the laptop, the first time it's a struggle, the, first, the second time it will, come on. It's, it's, a, it's a laptop that runs all those machines and it's, um, that's, that's, I get it sometimes. Not supposed to get it the second time. Come on. <laughs> oh, you embarrass me. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's embarrassing. It was supposed to go online and start working, but it's not for some reason. I think that because I'm running, I'm running too many virtual machines and I'm not running with, with power, so. Ah, you embarrass me, that's, that's bad. Uh, I think the machine just I can do it many times, but it won't, uh, it won't come up. Basically what you do in those cases in real life, you basically kill this machine and rebuild it, which I can, but I don't have time. 
I don't have time to do anything. Not even showing you how I'm adding another machine. But yeah, that's the idea. It's called InnoDB Cluster. If you are interested, Google it. Go ahead. Um, pretty easy to set up. I set it up before, you know, 10 minutes before we started. Really easy to set up. And yep, that's basically it. <laughs> so embarrassing. So embarrassing. The MySQL NoSQL interface has revisions, like a Couchbase says. The answer is not, not yet. Might, might come in the future, um, but no. So once you delete the data, once you delete the data, well, for this you do backup. No. So <laughs> it's it's not, not nothing replaces backup, guys. I, I seriously, I urge you, and you, you won't you won't know how uh, how. Uh, communities to for people not to back up their data because they think that versioning or snapshotting or all sorts of technologies are backup. Please don't. Backup is irreplaceable. Off-site or off-machine backup is always it's important. And and trust me, I go to many companies, and you just ah no backup. Please backup. No, never mind how amazing the technology that someone tells you it is. You know, it's, it's everything you say. No, don't believe anyone. Have a backup. At the end of the day, if, if it is it's your business and something goes wrong, you can go to the vendor until tomorrow and say, but you promise you'll still be the one who carries the results. So back up <laughs> regularly. So, so what was the question about the so joints? Okay, so so obviously for the noise SQL interface there is no joints, but you can do joints and everything on the on, on the same because it's the same. Just remember that the data sits on a table, regular table. You can do whatever you want with it. The, all the things that you do with SQL, you can you can join, you can do everything you want. Now it's a JSON a document, but you can extract the information. You can even build indexes inside the JSON, taking it out, and so you can do joins, you can do whatever you want, everything. Everything that you do with the normal database is still there. That's, that's the whole idea. It's a noise SQL with a SQL. See? Here. <laughs> it's really, it really is, it's just remember to think about it as an interface, not as a different database. The idea is to re remove the fact that you need different databases. You have one database that can do both of the same things because it makes sense. Sold. Come on, ask. Yes. 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 Very, very simple. It's just on just on the documents. You can extract them and import them easy. But are there are those um, are there significant differences between optimizations? Okay. So there was a, the question was can you export from Couchbase or for whatever database you want or whatever noise skill um, and import to my skill. The answer is yes. The question was, what about performance? Now, this is a thing that I didn't want to say because it doesn't sound very good. <laughs> Performance-wise, we won't be the quickest of the bench. Okay, so if you look at the, at the database that is optimized to extract JSON documents, then it's going to be much quicker than us because we convert everything to SQL. The, re the reason to use this interface is to reduce the amount of technologies and to use it when it makes sense, not because of performance. We can beat performance if we go to MySQL cluster, which is a, a bit of a high, higher 
solution that we've got, but basically performance-wise, we are not going to be shine. We're not going to be the quickest, but we provide a more complete feature set that allows you to do everything. Um, I had that something to add to it, and I can't remember. Okay, so using Dynamo as multiple question? Yeah. So what was the question? Okay, so the question was they're using DynamoDB, which is one of the NoSQL databases, and, and there are use cases where DynamoDB make more sense than MySQL. The answer is yes. NoSQL is not what we call a silver bullet. It's not that you, it's going to fix all your problems. Um, there are use cases. Uh, one very strong one is actually the guys that are sitting over here, our friends Elastic. What Elastic are doing, no one can do. Not us and all, not anyone else. They are very unique in what they're doing. But Elastic themselves are saying, we are not a database. We are a search engine. Don't use us as a, as a, as a, as a database. So if you have a use case where DownDB gives you a feature that is unique to what you're doing, and you definitely need it, and you don't need anything else, then by all means, use what works for you. Um, I can tell you that you know, there is a you know, use MySQL because it's the best, it's the greatest. Uh, I should, because I work for the company, <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm saying this is a feature that exists. If it makes sense to you because you need to do lots of analytics on your NoSQL data, this will help you. Let's reduce. Otherwise, what, what happens in many companies, and I see it in many companies, they have relational databases, they have NoSQL databases, they have very, very, very complicated processes to copy it from here to here. And where is the good truth of data? It's always the source of truth. Who is the one who wins? It's, it's a big mess. So we try to reduce it by saying, if you don't necessarily need a NoSQL database because it has a very fit, like, you know, Elastic. If you have Elastic, you need Elastic. You, you can get away with anything else. But if you don't need a specific feature, check this, check if it works for you. It might reduce your complexity because you don't need those very complex ETL processes of moving data from here to here. <laughs> Data flow is hard. Data flow and making sure that it's consistent. This is the big problem. People think that, ah, moving data is easy. I'll just create a script, Python script. You're right. The problem is that keeping consistency is hard. Making sure that what you have in one database and what one database gives you as an answer is actually the right result. That's always the problem. This is why we create these things when it works, where, where you know that all those machines all consistent, all show you the same data. And this is very important for many, many industries. Some industries, it's not. You know, search engines, it's not. If I show you a bit different or, you know, Facebook or stuff, it's not really important I'm showing you a bit different than others. But in finance, if I'm showing you that you have this much money, but you don't have this much money, it will be very, very upsetting. Unless the number is higher. Oh, oh, yes. Completely. So would the NoSQL interface respect uh, locks and everything else that NoSQL is? Completely, and asset compliant. So remember that unlike other databases, I won't say the name MongoDB, <coughs> We are, actually, we are actually fully asset compliant because InnoDB is asset compliant and we are using InnoDB. So everything, remember that the back, back, back end, it's all InnoDB, regular InnoDB. So locks and everything is in there. Can you index key? Yes, you can. You do it with generated, uh, generated columns. So you take the key you want and you generate it as a column. It's not stored, it just, gener it just virtually generates, and you build an index. Actually, in the demo, I had, a, I had an index, and I just skip it. But you just add index, and you have an index. It's one command. You can come to me after, I'll show you. Yeah. 
Before what? Yes, yes. I, I, I was I forgot that in, in Python, I'm thinking about our versioning number, then you bring me Python. Like, why are you talking about Python? I don't know. Weird. All right, I think that's all. And with that, let's give Sir Ronan Barron.